When it comes to surviving the zombie apocalypse, boats are kind of a big deal. In World War Z, they escape to an aircraft carrier. In Dawn of the Dead, they use a boat to escape to an island. In Left 4 Dead, they escape Riverside Park by boat. And in Fear the Walking Dead, they escape Los Angeles on Strand's boat. Today, we're going to figure out if boats are a viable option to escape the dangers of a zombie apocalypse, or if it just welcomes some unforeseen problems. This is Zombie Survival Labs. Surviving on a boat in a zombie apocalypse seems like a good idea, yeah. even to someone as pessimistic as myself. Food? Hello, fishing. Water? Enough to fill an ocean. <laughs> Zombies? Well, they have dumb brain, so they can't swim. It's like a mobile Garden of Eden, except Eve isn't there to screw it all up for you. But that's just looking at it at face value. I want to look at the pros of long-term survival on a boat, as well as the cons, to see just how good it is. Because preparing for a zombie apocalypse has the same guidelines as preparing for any realistic apocalypse scenario. Except when you start basing your list off of how to survive a World War Z kind of zombie apocalypse, then it just changes everything. So for this list, I'm not basing my list off of any special infected like those Donald Trump wall climbing zombies. With this list, we're going to stay grounded, I mean as much as you can when talking about zombies, by sticking with the Walking Dead or Dawn of the Dead type of zombies. But before we can look at the pros and the cons of surviving on a boat in a zombie apocalypse, we need to figure out what kind of boat we're going to be basing this list off of. With boats of all different types of sizes and purposes, I decided to go with a yacht, particularly the Abigail from Fear the Walking Dead. But I'll discuss other boats at the end. So so let's get into it. What are the pros to surviving on a boat like a yacht in a zombie apocalypse? Boats have been the saving grace for survivors in zombie movies and games for one single reason. It's basically an invisible barrier that zombies can't cross because zombies can't swim. With enough zombies, fences and doors will eventually get knocked down. But even with a super horde of walking corpses, you'll be safe about 10 feet off a dock, making a boat essentially zombie proof, so we can mark safety as a pro to surviving on a boat in a zombie apocalypse. Aside from being zombie proof, a perk you have to surviving on a boat in a zombie apocalypse is that you basically have an endless amount of food, given that you have a fishing pole. I'm talking flounder, yellowtail, swordfish, aka the ocean's filet mignon. Looks like we're going fishing, boys. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, as it turns out, you can't survive off a fish alone. While it's a good source of protein and omega-3, your body needs other things like vitamin C, for example. That's why a lot of European explorers died at sea because of a horrible diet. There is a way around this, though, and it's called hydroponic farming. You have as much water as you'll ever need, so if you have the know-hows to making such a farm, your food situation at this point is pretty much covered. Even though surviving on a boat doesn't completely solve your food situation, it still definitely makes it a lot easier, which is why I'm going to leave the food pro up there. Now, while you might have an ocean size amount of water, you can't straight up drink salt water, you know, because it'll kill you. But most large boats like yachts or ones meant to carry passengers for an extended amount of time have what's known as a desalination system on the boat. And basically what a desalination does is it filters out the salt from the water, meaning that you kind of have an endless amount of water as long as you have enough juice in the battery to power the desalination system. To achieve this, you'd have to rig some type of solar panel or other means of generating power to the boat to keep the battery topped off to allow you to do this. Or you could go old school with some improvised distillation. So hopefully you know how to do this or else you'll just be scavenging like everybody else on land. Because the food and water situation both require a decent amount of work around to utilize effectively, I'm gonna keep them both on the pros list, but I'm gonna combine them so they're just one pro. Another benefit is shelter. A yacht is kind of like a house, except that it's on water and it's mobile. It has bedrooms, bathrooms, kitchens, lounge areas, and more. It keeps you dry when it rains, warm at night, and protects you from the elements. Well, for the most part. but it protects you from all the other things, so I'm still going to include it in the pros list. You also have plenty of storage space. More if you have less people and less if you have more people. But storage, nonetheless. Because you're gonna be getting a large amount of food from fishing, you don't really need that much storage space for your food. The same goes for water too. Because your source of water is literally right off the side of the boat, you can distill and store your water as an as-need basis, allowing you to have a lot of storage space for other things. Security is a major concern in the zombie apocalypse outside of zombies, and something that a yacht or a boat can offer is a great vantage point. With the shore on one side and the open waters on the other, it allows you to see oncoming threats a lot more easily. If there's people on the shore, you'll be easily able to spot them. And the same goes for if there's a boat on the water, it'll be incredibly easy to spot them. So being on a boat gives you the benefit of having 
having no surprises coming your way. So obviously by looking at the pros list, that sounds pretty OP, but what are some cons to surviving on a boat? Firstly, maintenance is a huge issue. Talk to anyone that owns a boat and they'll tell you that maintaining it is an aneurysm just waiting to happen. In fact, it's a big reason that people end up selling their boat after they've only had it for a couple of years. It's just too much of a headache for them. The larger a boat becomes, more maintenance is required to not only keep it operational, but also afloat. Oddly enough, boats aren't meant to stay in water forever. Eventually, you're going to need to dry dock your boat so that way you can get the barnacles and algae and other things that damage your boat off because leaving your boat sit there will cause the blister, rust, and deteriorate over time, and is all around going to need constant care. With nothing but time on your hands and the knowledge on how to do these things, it's doable. But after a couple of decades, you might need to find yourself a new boat, because after about 20 years or so, the amount of effort and work you'll be putting into this boat just to keep it afloat is almost counterintuitive. 20 plus years is a long time to survive on anything, so I'm not going to completely rule it out. But maintenance is a massive con and shouldn't be taken lightly. Another issue that you're going to run into is you're basically a giant beacon for other survivors that might not have good intentions. You're a sitting duck when out on the open waters. When you have solar panels and hydroponic farms, it's pretty hard to be discreet about it. Some people would suggest that moving your boat far enough out into the ocean or far away from the coast that no one can see you will solve this problem. While that is correct, you also just made scavenging a much more difficult task. Scavenging is something that's never going to end regardless of where you are in an apocalyptic situation. By putting yourself far far out from land, you put more work into getting to land to be able to scavenge. Plus, each time you make a trip to land and make a trip back to your boat, you're basically telling other survivors where you are. So going farther out kind of negates the whole efficiency that a boat offers you anyway. Plus, all it takes is your ship getting riddled with bullets to end up losing your home and make a new home for the fishes. An obvious con that we kind of lightly went into is fuel. If you're not planning on traveling a lot and planning on just staying in one spot, this con isn't really that big of an issue. But if that's your method of getting back to land or changing locations, then it becomes an obvious issue. Another issue you're going to run into is operations. Once you start getting into larger size boats like super yachts or aircraft carriers, operating the boat becomes a lot more difficult. Like look at all of these buttons and levers and can you tell me that you know how to operate this? If you do, this isn't a con for you, but if you don't, this is a huge one. Big old boats like cruise ships, super yachts, and aircraft carriers aren't like cars. You can't just turn a key, press on the pedal, and just start steering. You need a crew to run a ship that's that large, so unless you have people that are trained in your group, it's not happening. So with this list that we have here, I believe I have enough information to say whether or not a boat is good or not for surviving a zombie apocalypse. I mean, on smaller boats, yeah, it's not that difficult. But large boats like cruises, super yachts, and aircraft carriers, it's not happening. For short-term survival, absolutely, it's a great option. If your goal was to use a yacht like Strands from The Walking Dead to wait out the chaos of a zombie apocalypse, then yeah, it's absolutely a great idea. You have food, water, shelter, and safety from zombies. But long-term, like I said, after about 20 years, the chances of the boat still being operational and afloat is pretty low. But that's 20 years, so I'll give it respect for that. So would I call that long-term survival? Yeah, but I wouldn't call that indefinite long-term survival. With boat survival, there's not much growth that can be done. You can't really grow your community, expand, or raise future generations here. If I could rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being horrible, 5 being short-term, 7 being long-term, and 10 being indefinite, I'd probably give it a solid 7, maybe an 8. But that's only if you or the people you're with have the skills necessary to make it work. If not, you can take that solid eight and bring it all the way down to a three or five. If you and the people you're with don't know how to operate or maintain a boat, then you should probably just ignore it. What do you guys think though? Did I miss any pros or cons? Let me know in the comment section down below. And my name is Tyler, and you are now one step closer to surviving the zombie apocalypse. See you later.